Hello everyone, uh, my name is Arda Sinkovic. I came from the Ötvös Lorand University, Budapest, Hungary. And I'm, I'm actually here for the third time in Aspen, giving a talk related to template metaprogramming. And uh, the main reason for that is I have developed and I have been maintaining template metaprogramming libraries or libraries based on template metaprogramming. I gave talks about the most interesting parts of these last year and the year before. And uh, as you can imagine, uh, I have spent a lot of time developing and debugging and maintaining template metaprograms. And uh, I have also felt the pain uh, due to the lack of tools when working on these things. Um, basically, if you have to develop or try out or, or debug a template meta program, your main tool is the compiler and the error messages, which can be extremely inconvenient in many cases, especially when the meta program gets a little bit more complicated. If you have seen my talks from last year or the year before, you get an idea of what complexity I'm, I'm talking about. And um, I, when I learned about LibClang and uh, the fact that it was built for uh, building tools for C++, then I started thinking that, OK, I've got this problem that uh, there are not too many tools for, for template metaprogramming. And uh, I, I definitely need one to, to make my job easier. Couldn't I just build one? And the answer to that question is obviously yes, because I'm, I'm giving this talk now. And um, I have built the tool I was actually missing the most, which is an interactive shell for developing and debugging metaprograms. So <clears throat> in this talk, I will introduce you this shell. I will show you how the shell works and um, how you can use it. So these are the, the main two things I would like to show you today. <clears throat> so what will be our agenda for today? Well, I'm going to tell you a story about Joe. Joe is a C++ developer. Uh, two days ago, we, we learned about that uh, Joe developer is well represented in the, in the standard committee meetings. Uh, today, he will get interested in template metaprogramming. And later on, he will become an advanced template metaprogrammer. And what we will be looking at is, uh, during this process, how he can make use of MetaShell, which is the interactive shell I have built for template metaprogramming. So that's our agenda for today. Let's get started. Joe became interested in template metaprogramming. Joe has been using libraries that are based on template metaprogramming and uh, has heard that uh, he can use these template tricks to solve problems he cannot solve otherwise in his library interfaces and these sorts of things. So Joe says, well, it looks like an interesting thing to look at. Let's start to learn about template metaprogramming. So he has a number of books to read. He just reads them. Um, <laughs> yes, and he became the expert. No. Um, so after a while, he says, OK, I think I know enough. So I will, I will try to implement the classical factorial as a template meta program. So he says, I want to calculate factorials at home by time as a first step. Here is his implementation. And the way he can use it is that uh, if he wants to calculate the factorial of 3, then he instantiates this factorial template class with 3. And by accessing colon colon value, uh, this expression will be basically a compile time constant. And the value of this thing will be the factorial of 3. So Joe says, OK, here is my factorial meta program. Here is how I can use it. I want to try it out. I, I want to see that it, it really works and it really the factorial of 3 will be. Uh, what would be your advice to Joe? How can he try this thing out? I tend to write a really short main function and just have a, few, a handful of examples of using the template. So the idea was to have a main function and have some examples using the template. That's exactly what Joe does. So he creates a, a simple, simple test program uh, this is a value, so he can just print it out to standard output. After that, Joe compiles the program, runs the program, and verifies that it, it really printed out 6, which is the correct value. So he says, OK, 
Now I have tried this factorial out and I can see that it's, it's producing the right value. And at this point, he sort of believes that this thing was available at compile time and calculated at compile time. He could not verify that fact. Uh, he could by instantiating a template with this or by looking at the assembly code. At this point, he believes it. Question? So, it's a trivial way to check Jack's app and you try to put the value as an array size. Yes. Try to compile it. So the comment was that he could also create an array of size factory value, and that would also work, yes. Um, after that, Joe learns about template meta functions, and uh, to understand the way meta shell works, <coughs> it's pretty important that everyone understands the term meta function, or template meta function, and it is also important that everyone has the same understanding of the term template meta function. So I will quickly introduce this. Uh, a C++ template meta function is basically a function over types. So the arguments of that function are types and the result of the function is a type. And this is a function evaluated at compile time. And as every other function, it has arguments, it has some name, and it's a, it has some body as well. And here is an example for a template meta function. A template meta function basically a template type. And the template arguments are the arguments of the meta function, the name of the template type is the name of the meta function, and the result of the meta function is a nested type called type, and its definition is the body of the meta function. So this example meta function takes a type as argument and produces the const version of that type. And uh, here is how you can use it. So. In this example, I use this meta function to produce the const version of int. So this is basically a, a tricky way of writing const int, or a complicated way of writing const int, but this is a good example of how, how this meta function works. You provide the name and you provide the actual arguments. If you access colon colon type, then that's, that's the resulting type, and that's, that's a type. Are there any questions before we move on? Okay. So Joe learns all about it and says, this is cool, I want to write my own at const meta function. And he writes his own at const meta function, but he happens to make a mistake. And instead of const, he happens to put volatile there. Uh, I don't think we can call this thing a typo, but let's say Joe was partying all night and he cannot concentrate that well, and he happens to put volatile there. Of course, he, he is not aware of this thing. So he just says, OK, I have written my at const meta function. And again, I want to try this thing out. What would be your advice to Joe this time? Try to use that to add const to a type and then assign to it and make sure you get a compile error. Yes. So, so the advice was that try to create a, a variable of at const something and try to assign to it and make sure that it does not compile. Kind of so static assets that each same add const something is equal to something const. So the other advice is that use static assert to make uh, verify that add const something is equals to const something. Uh, make a template class which isn't defined, and you know that there will be a compiler error message, but it should include the type in there. So the third advice was to create a, a <laughs> template class that doesn't define and actually trigger an error message with the, the name of this type in it. Um, use type ID dot name of the resulting type to, to get a string representation of it, inspect it. Another idea to use type ID and display it somewhere and send an output. <laughs> yeah, but is that going to be a mangled or non mangled name? Uh, C still unmangles. Just it will be a mangled name. Like it bind to C feed then. Yes, absolutely. And be a man. Uh, MPL has a macro call, uh, excuse me, a, a uh, Meta function called print, and on many, on some or many compilers, I'm not sure, it will display a warning with the type the name as part of the warning. So there was a comment saying that uh, there is a meta function in or a template in, in MPL which is print, and that can do this trick for us, mm -hmm. and you, we don't have to code it ourselves. And the good thing about it is a warning, so it doesn't. If, if, if you have it as part of the bigger program. It doesn't stop everything. It, it has other imperfections, but it, 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 that's, that's what I've been using. 
an, uh, an extension to that comment that it is a warning, so it, it won't break the compilation. Um, as there are no further advices, let's look at what the slide says. So advice number one, let's try to create a variable of type constint and try to assign to it. And since it's a, it is a compile or a const int, then the compiler should not accept that thing. Joe tries it and it compiles. And all he can tell, well, that's, that is bad. It means that I, I screwed something up. So yeah, that's one way of doing it. Another advice which we have also heard is to use is same to compare this thing with constant. So we say that we expect this thing to be a constant and use a static assertion. So when Joe tries this one, then he will get an error message saying that it is not constant. But again, he doesn't have a clue then what this thing is if it's not constant. So what he can do is he can look at the definition of this class and if he keeps looking at it long enough, then he will figure out, oh yeah, that should be const. Mm -hmm. But if it's a little bit bigger than this, then it, this long enough may take days. So it's, it's not a good solution. We have also heard the print, about the print function. Well, Metamonad has the exact same. It is called fail with type, which does the same thing. It actually mm, enforces an error and not a warning, but the same thing. It will display an error message and that will contain the name of the type. So by looking at this, Joe will be able to say that, okay, this is volatile int and not constant. So Joe had to do all these things by creating a main function, calling fail with type or print, and then looking at the error message, searching for the name of the type, and then he has accomplished that one thing that I have called my function with one argument and I have looked at the result. So it's, it's an extremely long and complicated process for doing something as simple as calling my function and looking at what the result is. And um, Joe used to do Python programming in the past and he sort of remembers how it worked in Python. He could start an interactive shell, he could even define his function there if he wanted to, for example a factorial. And then he could just type in fact three and the shell displayed him, well, this is six. And it was, it was that easy. And it's not specific to Python. So Joe used to do Erlang programming. Joe used to do Haskell programming. And we could keep listing languages there. Um, it's a common thing for languages to provide an interactive shell where you can test things and you can try things easily out. And then Joe says, well, yeah, why can't the same idea be applied to template metaprogramming as well? And how would that uh, shell look like that Joe would need in this situation? Well, he would start up the shell. He would type in at const int colon colon type. So he would try to call his meta function. And then the shell would display, well, it's volatile int. And that's it. And then Joe could say, oh yeah, that's volatile and that should be const and not volatile. <coughs> so what is going on here? When, he, when Joe types in add const in colon colon type, then Joe is referring to this, this type definition. And that thing is just the type alias of volatile int. So all this shell has to do is that Joe types in or refers to a type alias, and the shell has to resolve that type alias and display the resolved type. And that's basically it. <clears throat> and then Joe can say, okay, now I fix this, now it, it becomes const. And then he tries it out again and verifies that, yeah, now this is working correctly. So that is the basic idea. And uh, as a side note, so that running template meta programs in most of the cases I came across really mean, uh, meant that there was a type alias that had to be resolved at some point, which was typically type. So colon colon type was a type alias of something else that had to be resolved. And uh, this thing is true the other way around. If you say that here is a type def and resolve this for me, that might mean that you have to run a template meta program as a, a side effect or uh, to get that type resolution. Two years ago, I have shown how to implement a Haskell -like, like an interpreter for a Haskell-like language as a template meta program. So it means that if you try to resolve a type alias, then you might have to run a Haskell interpreter to do that. But this is, of course, just a side note. And let's see Metashell in action. 
So here is a demo for Metashell. You can just start it from the command line, and then you get the prompt. And um, if you type in the name of a type, well, I'll make the font bigger, then it will just print that type out. So I can say char star, for example, and it will tell me char star. Or I can say that, OK, I define a meta function, such as at const. By the way, you get uh, type completion, which is a nice thing. You say type def const t type. <coughs> Then you have defined your meta function, and then you can just try it out with int and verify that it's giving the right result. Uh, excuse my English, please, but have you considered for this program such tools like <coughs> Ring, REPL, tools like Ring, which is based on Clang 2, or common uh, name type in GDB? Do you understand me? I'm sorry, I couldn't get it. I couldn't understand it. Tools. Have you considered tools like Link? Something that I didn't catch. Tools like Green. Green. Lint. Green. Are you saying Lint? Link Clang. Lint? No, not Clang. Green. It's Clang. 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 Yes. It's a repo which is based on Clang. I'm not aware of this. So I, I haven't considered because oh, of this. Okay. Thank you. And the question was have I considered Clang? Yeah. <laughs> Are there other questions? OK. Um, yeah, I can try it out with other types as well, such as double. And then, of course, it will do const double or char star. Const int, I would like to see. Yeah. <coughs> it will be constant. Well, there is clang behind it, so everything clang does, this thing will do. And uh, if Joe says, OK, uh, I've got at const, so I'm developing at const, the at const meta function, then he can just create this header file with at const in it. He can start meta shell and then say include at const hpp into the shell. And then he can just try it out. And then it works. Yes, and you get all the error messages from Clang as well. Question. Sure. If my header includes more headers, are they also included? Yes. Okay. So the question was if the header includes further headers, are they also included? And yes, they are. And you have an option for minus capital I or so? so? Yes, and uh, Metasha has the option for minus capital I or minus capital D as well. Okay. Are there other questions? OK. Yeah. So the question was, how does it react when the type is not known? Well, if then Clang will give an error message and it will display the error message. But I can quickly show you. So there is a foo, type code foo, and it says use of undeclared. I'm sorry? Include. Again, we get the, the Clang error message. So, so uh, this depends uh, whether it's error messages all, all on C Lang. You get, you're gonna, if, if you were to make your own little um, executable or t to test it, you would get exactly the same stack of error messages you get here. The question was, it only depends of, for error messages on Clang. And if I would just compile it with Clang, then I would get the same error messages. And yes. Uh, what distinction? Um, I when you typed in the add comms template meta function into the shell, that template meta function has a type itself, but the shell did not respond with the type of that. Yet when you type in, it responds with in. So yes. Does, so does it respond differently for primitives? Or? Well, the meta function. Um, so the meta function is the template class add const, and it has an internal type. So I was referring to that, which was constant. 
Yes, I'm saying when you when you input the function into the shell, it did not respond by telling you the type of what you just put in when you put the function. Okay, in the so the question was when I was defining the meta function, then the shell knew that it's a meta function. We will get back to that. Oh, okay. So the question was, what happens if I don't put colon colon type there? And yes, I will show you. No, at const. It just shows me at const because this is the type at. It is not the type at. I'm sorry. At const. Like this? No. Or without even the It will tell me an error message. Why is that? that no template arguments. But it's really? we're we're testing Clang here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go on. <clears throat> uh, so let's look at how this thing works internally. Uh, Joe types in at constant type. And what happens then, or what Metashell does then, is that Metashell takes this type and defines a variable called underscore underscore Metashell underscore v. And then the whole thing, I mean the meta function definition and this thing are all given to libclang. And then libclang builds the abstract syntax tree. And libclang also provides tools to traverse this AST and search for this underscore underscore Metashell v variable. And then we can say, okay, what is the type? of this variable, and then we can say, okay, get canonical type, which will resolve the type alias for us. Question? Um, does it only work if, like, you're, if the type has a default constructor, or how does it work with that? Uh, is it generated in it, uh, this one is from this will be if, say, it's void? Right? So the question was, does it only work if this type has a uh, default constructor? And my answer is that no, because it also wrapped, but I left it out for simplicity. So it has a wrapper type, template type. So in the chunk of code you send to Clank, does that in, so that includes my entire like shell's history, everything I've typed in thus far in the session? Or uh, what happens if I have an error like in the middle of that? Will that screw up the rest of the shell session? So the question was, does the, this whole thing contain the history as well? And my answer is that we will get back to that later. <laughs> OK. So what we have to do now is to pretty print this type and display it to the user. And, and that's basically it. So that's that's the core of, of Metashell. OK, after that, Joe says, OK, I learned about constxpr functions. And uh, he learns all the good stuff about it, that it's simpler than templates. And when he can use it for numeric calculation, then it might be a better choice. He writes his own constxpr factorial function. And he says, well, I know that this is a template metaprogramming shell. but..." I still might be able to try my factorial const expression function out in it. And I will show you how this thing is possible. <clears throat> so um, we can define the const factorial. We say that, oops, return when n is 0, then 1, otherwise n times factorial n minus 1. And then I've defined my factorial, and I try to call it with factorial 3. And what I get is an error message saying that this factorial 3 is not a type. And the problem there is that uh, I have already shown you that Metashell tries to create a variable with this type. And this is not a type, so Clang complains. What can be done in this case is that since it only returns an inter integer value, we can include type traits and then say that, okay, std integral constant int fact3. And then it will show us, yeah, it's 6 if you cannot see it because it's purple and black. But this way, well, it is a metaprogramming shell, but still we can try out or constix functions that return integral values. 
And to support this uh, to some point, MetaShell provide a built-in header called MetaShell Scalar.hpp and then we can write Scalar Fact 3. This is a macro expanding to something like this. So this makes it easier to try it out if you decide to try these things out. And if you look at this scalar thing, um, or the definition of this scalar thing, then it is really just a just a macro. Well, removing const and volatile and these sorts of things, but it, it is just a macro. So there is nothing built in support in MetaShell. In, for this, it is just a macro. So that's about um, constant expressions. Uh, you have noticed that there is syntax highlighting in the shell, and I think it's worth mentioning how this thing is implemented. So for example, the shell was about to display this std integral constant in 6. And the way it displayed it was that the int keyword was green and the integral integer literal was 6 and these sorts of things. Uh, the way this is implemented is that if we tokenize this string, so we, we get the C++ tokens for it, then it's pretty easy to do the syntax highlighting afterwards because we just iterate over the tokens, display them one by one with the appropriate color based on the token type. And the thing is that there is a boost library which can do this tokenization for us, the boost wave library, and it provides a pretty nice interface. Basically, you give this string to the library and you get an iterator over the tokens. So this is called copied from the source code of Metashell to the slide. There is a for loop over these tokens and uh, all tokens are displayed. And before that it says, okay, if it's an integral literal token, then make it purple and so on and so forth. Question? Um, so why use boost wave as opposed to, I mean, didn't you say that it was already tokenized by a clank for you? Well, it is using the clank public API. I'm, I'm not aware of any way of tokenization or getting the source code tokenized through that C API that is uh, promised to be backward compatible. Uh, could it be that you didn't have, you have access to C-Lang compiler but not the C-Lang preprocessor? It's because you're using the C API and not the C++ public headers. Yes, so the comment was that it is because I'm using the C API and not the public headers and my answer to that is that because it's backward compatible, so it, it doesn't need to be maintained. There is a boost library which does it for me anyway, so it, it is not a, a difficulty at all. Are there any other comments about it or questions? <coughs> okay, then Joe is on its way to become an advanced template meta programmer, and um, he learns about boost MPL, the old one. He, he cannot use your new shiny boost MPL, but um, he learns about the old one, and um, yeah, let's see what he can do with this. <coughs> so he can say that, okay, I will try out boost MPL vector. So he says that, okay, I'll include boost MPL vector. And um, he says that, okay, and I will use using namespace boost MPL just to make my life easier. And after that, he says, okay, I will try to create a simple vector of an int and a char. And he types in int char, and he expects Metashell to echo this vector back to him. But when he types in this thing, this is what he gets as the result. And the reason for that is that uh, Boost MPL supports legacy compilers. So compilers which uh, don't support variadic templates. So Boost MPL simulates variadic templates with a long argument list and this special type MPL underscore colon colon NA, which means that here is nothing. So this uh, instance of vector means that this is the vector with two elements, int and char, and here is nothing. And there are default template arguments so that we can write this thing in the source code, and we might get used to that. A uh, Boost MPL vector looks like this, but in the reality, it is that long. And Metashell shows everything, and it shows the default arguments as well. Um, and that's just the beginning. <coughs> so then uh, Joe says, okay, I will try some operations out. So he says, I'll include 
push front. And then it says, okay, I will call push front vector and double. And this is what he gets. And this is not even an instance of boostmpl vector. It is an instance of boostmpl v item. And uh, this is because of the implementation details of boostmpl. Um, boostmpl uses tag dispatching to identify vectors. So both types represent vectors. And this type represents the vector with three elements, double int and char. But this thing is not, or was not meant to be shown to the users. Even though if you have debugged any template metaprogramming errors in a library that was using boostmpl, you might have come across these things anyway. But uh, basically, these things were not meant to be shown to the user. <clears throat> and the problem is that uh, since Metashell displays these things, Metashell for looking at boostmpl stuff in this form is unusable. And um, as I said earlier, the primary goal for writing this tool was that to make my life easier. And all my libraries are based on boostmpl, so I, I had to do something with it. Here is what I did with this thing. Uh, for vector, a new type can be in introduced uh, called boost underscore MPL. And this is a variadic type for vector. And I put it in the boost underscore MPL. So if you look at it, then it is almost like boost MPL vector. But there is this underscore to avoid interfering with the real boost implementation. And then you can say that, OK, I instantiate this type with int and char. And then it looks almost like a boost MPL vector in char. And the idea is that when Metashell is about to display this thing, then Metashell should instead display this other thing to make it. So this is some sort of a pretty printing. This is a pretty printed version of that other type. And when Metashell is about to display this V item something, then it should display MPL vector double in char instead. So that's the idea. And so I introduced the formatter into Metashell before Metashell displays anything, it gives that thing to the formatter. And then the formatter says, OK, display this other type instead. So this formatter takes a type, which Metashell is about to display, and returns another type, which Metashell should display instead. Uh, so this formatter is a type-to-type -type conversion, which can be implemented as a template meta function, and is implemented as a template meta function. So there is the template meta function Metashell formatter which Metashell uses for, for pretty printing. And of course, there is a default implementation, which, which is just the identity. So there is nothing changed. But you can, you can uh, spe spe specialize the template class to get this, this pretty printing. <coughs> so the idea is that uh, there is the boostmpl vector class, which supports legacy compilers. And there is this variadic vector class, which is used for pretty printing. And this thing is kept as the real implementation of the library. And that other thing is added just for displaying it in Metashell. And you can, if you have, are the author or the maintainer of Vector HPP, then you can put the real implementation there. And you can put the pretty printing there. And of course, the specialization of that uh, formatting at a function. But of course, there is a problem there. Because this thing needs variadic templates, so it will not compile with legacy compilers. What you can do about it is have a hash mark if. And if it's used in Metashell, then have the pretty printing, otherwise not. And Metashell provides this underscore underscore Metashell macro for you to test for this thing. And uh, this thing is not part of Boost MPL's vector. But Metashell provides the pretty printers for the boostmpl containers as built-in headers. So you can say, include Metashell formatter vector, Metashell formatter list, and so on and so forth. Or you can say that, OK, just give me all formatters, and, and that's it. Um, when I first built this thing, I thought that uh, it would be a good idea to write vector this way that it also contains pretty printing for Metashell, so that if you include boostmpl vector into Metashell, then it has the pretty printing as well. But I built it this way, and I started using it this way. And uh, I realized that there is value in that you can specify if you want pretty printing or not. Because in some cases, you really want to look at 
the real type that's coming out of boost MPL. And in other cases, and in most cases actually, you, you just want pretty printing. So what I found is that it's valuable that a user can specify if he wants pretty printing. And the, the easiest way seems to be just to have a, the pretty printing in a separate header. So that's, that was my conclusion. And let's do a demo of this pretty printing. <coughs> so here I just say, OK, I include meta shell formatter vector.hpp. And I will try to display the vector type again. And as you can see, I get boost underscore vector int char. And if I try the push front again, then I will get vector double in char. So it, it makes this thing usable this way. Yes? Can you undo the include of the formatter? The question was if I can do undo the form include of the formatter. And my answer is no, unfortunately. You have to stop Metashell and start it over again. So it is something like a compilation process that, where you cannot uninclude a header file yeah, in C++. Maybe you, you had a reset statement or something like that. Comment was that it, we might, or I might add the, a reset statement. Yes? Um, the syntax tree isn't built up incrementally, right? So every time you put in a new line, it makes a big string and then parses that again. Is that right? The question was uh, the syntax tree is not built up incrementally, but it's built up from the ground up every time. Yes, and we will cover that later in detail. But that's right. So the association between types in these pretty printed types is just the trailing underscore of like the topmost namespace? Or is there another sort of? Uh, the question was if the association with these types and these things is the underscore. And well, the association is defined in this header. And it's something I, I decided to to introduce myself, but yes. So it's not MetaShell that associates this type with this type. In this header, there is a meta function that tells MetaShell that this thing should be associated with this thing. So do we get this in cool stuff also for fusion? The question was that if uh, you get this thing for fusion, and my answer is that no, but you can write it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will include it. As I have not been using uh, Fusion that much, and I was the primary target for this tool, I haven't built that. <laughs> Are there other questions? Yes? Is there a mechanism where you can save the state and then uh, do a couple things and re restore the state? I I'm thinking in cases when I create types and I'm working along, and I, of course now I've created a trail of side effects, and I can't repeat the experiment. Meanwhile, I might have included a bunch of stuff in the meantime, so that's my question. So the question was if it's possible to say that, okay, save the state, do something, define things, include what things, and after that, say that, okay, reset to the save state. And my answer is that no, but it's a great idea for a future feature of this tool. There are no further questions, then let's proceed. <coughs> Joe becomes an advanced template meta programmer. <laughs> and um, he decides to create a new data type, maybe as an addition to boost uh, MPL11. Um, in our example, it will be the, the naive implementation of a linked list. But uh, it's not that important what the example is. Here the example, so how you can implement a linked list in template meta programming in the simplest way possible. Well, uh, if you're already familiar with functional programming, then this thing should be also familiar to you. You can say that the nil type represents the empty list. And you create a template class called cons with two template arguments. And this represents the non-empty list. The first template argument is the first element of this non-empty list. And the other template argument is, the, is a list, which is the remaining list of remaining elements. So here is an example of how you can use it. I will show you how to create the list in char and in 13. This is a type list, and we will create this type list with these two things. Or we will represent this type list. And we start with the empty list. So we say that, OK, the nil type represents the empty list. And then we say that, OK, uh, we create a list with one element in 13. 
So we say that this is cons in 13 and the empty list. So this is the first element and this is the remaining list, which is empty because we only have one element at this point. After that, we use cons again to uh, append char at the beginning. And now char is the first element and the remaining list is what we have built before. And we can keep repeating this as long as we want or as long as our compiler can keep up. <laughs> And we can build long lists this way. So, are there questions about how it works? Okay, Joe says, I will create this data type for template metaprogramming and I will be using Metashell to help me doing that. <clears throat> and then he says, well, first he creates the data type itself. So he creates this header. It only contains the definitions I have already shown you. And then he says that I start Metashell. Well, it shouldn't work. So I start, start Metashell with a minus capital E argument. And then I just include my list HPP header. <coughs> and then I can say nil and see that, okay, I have created an empty list now. Or I can say cons int nil. I have created a list with one element. Or I can say cons char int nil, and I have created a list with two elements, and so on. <coughs> and then, Joe can say, okay, I will create pretty printing for this. So he creates the list formatter header file. I won't go into details how it works. He defines the variadic template list, which will represent the list in a, in a human readable way. And then he creates the metaprograms for telling Metashell that these lists are associated with the, with the real list representations. So he writes all these things and then he says, okay, I will include it. And he tries to create an empty list again and now the formatter works and displays the empty list. Or he can say that I will create this longer list and the formatter will show you in a human readable way. After that, Joe can say that, okay, I create operations on this such as back I just create another header file. I implement the back operation for list, and then I try it out. So I include back HPP, and then I say, okay, I want to try this meta function out for this list. And then he can verify that, yeah, it returned the correct result. Or he can say that I create a pushback Again, he can define it in his own header file. Include it. And try to push back a double element into this list. And get an error because he was using the arguments in the wrong order. And now it works and he can see the result. And since he has written the pretty printer, he can see the results in a human readable way. <coughs> so that, how, that is how one can use this shell to develop meta functions and meta programming data types. Um, I have asked the question that, okay, what else can you do with this thing? It, this is a tool for debugging template metaprograms, is it good for something else? And the other thing I have found this thing useful for is answering the questions such as, what is the type of X? Where X can be uh, an object created with auto. So you or some of your coworkers has written this code. Some function has tons of overloads. One of them is selected. Based on that, there is some sort of a return type. 
you have to debug this code and you don't have a clue what this thing is because the author said that okay I, I will not write the type out I will just use auto because it's shorter and it works anyway <coughs> another example is that when you've got a template class you instantiate it with something and then it has a colon colon header or colon colon ID or something like that and you create a, a variable of that type and again you ask the question okay what is the type of this variable and I will show you a, a debugging using Metashell <clears throat> so <clears throat> we've got this main CPP here's an example program it calls it it has a template function in it it instantiates this template function with double calls it and it creates a variable of type at colon colon handle and you you have to debug this code and you ask the question okay what is the type of this variable h <clears throat> and you say that well it's simple let's look at h dot hpp and it says well it publicly inherits from b so let's look at B. It says, well, my handle is the handle of C instantiated with T and DU. And then you can go and look at the definition of C, which says it comes from C factory instantiated with U item and so on and so forth. And you can keep iterating and after a while you will definitely lose track of why you are looking at this specific part. And you start to take notes of, okay, the different nested steps. But of course, what you can do is you can start Metasha, include your CPP, and then look at the source code and say, uh, I'm interested in A double colon colon handle. So you say A double colon colon handle, and it will tell you it's G instantiated with int and yeah you can look at it so you can look at g.hpp and yes there is the full function so if we try to compile this code and try to run it then we can verify that this is really the function that was called <coughs> so this is how you can use it for the money yes So the question, the question was if we have a variable called x in main, can we tell Natasha that I'm interested in the type of main colon colon x? And my answer is that no. You have to look at the definition of the, the variable. But you can use decal type if you can refer to that variable somehow. Are there other questions? Yes? Is, is, does this by any chance uh, evaluate constant expressions also? Uh, the question was if it evaluates constant expressions also, and my answer is yes. Uh, I have shown earlier an example where we use Metashell to, to evaluate constant expression and look at the result of it. Are there, yes? <coughs> How do you evaluate some function? Or do I have to, do, can I reserve some function and will find the type, or do I have to declare some variable? How do I know the type of x, the first one? The first one. Yeah, so the question was, how do I know the type of this thing? I say decal type some function and this thing. If there are no further questions, then um, how can you get Metashell? <coughs> well, uh, it's on GitHub. So you can download the source code and compile it yourself. Uh, I will make the slides public. Um, there are pre-built binaries, but I recommend compile it from, compiling it from source if possible because the binaries are the binaries of version 1.0 and there are a number of patches and small feature additions since then. Is that a question? Yes, I'm not just stretching my own. <laughs> yeah, this, this time. This time. <laughs> um, so is 
So uh, I actually, um, I am actually very interested in something like this for the last oh, 10 years. Um, something that's has, that gives you the ability to do template debugging. I'll show all this while we're all here. Um, I first had seen it in, uh, in a couple of years ago. I actually looked at this about 10 years ago when my company urged me to patent this and I refused because I felt this was just too good to, 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 to really hold off on of, like, Thank you. A couple of things. That, no, I'm not saying just because, but I generally have a thing against patents anyway, even though. But there are a couple of things I've always wanted, and you've, you've given me some of them. Um, I, I want you to, I mean, I've always wanted the ability to find, figure out the types of something. I want the ability to figure out uh, what is the value, what, 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 what something means. But the, the, the whole point of template debugging is that if you transfer it from um, a runtime debugging to the template debugging idea, you're trying to say what happens as I'm working along a program. But now you're in a compile time environment. And in a compile time environment, substitutions are going on constantly. And I can't see those substitutions. And I can't try out new substitutions that I want because somebody has messed up somewhere. Either me or my, my library vendor, sorry, or my compiler has substituted the wrong thing. But what I really want is to you know, think about what you do when you're trying to debug things at runtime and translate that to when you're trying to debug it at compile time. I've got good news for you. So, so the comment was that uh, I've got good news for you. So the comment was that uh, you cannot see the different steps or the internal steps of megato program execution, only the end result. And um, the good news I have for you is that everything is available to implement that. Uh, it is in the to-do <laughs> list of the tool. Um, if uh, I can find a time or if anybody volunteers to do that, I can help him and this would be really so, useful. So what we could provide, it's in, in a later slide anyway, is an interf a GDB-like interface where you can go into the template meta function instantiation stack, step by step and go into the meta functions and see the arguments and step up. So it covers the, the code chain. So this is, this is like the, uh, the presentation from last year. If we combine the two uh, from last year with this one, then we can get this. So that's why I say um, everything is there, just the time is needed to build it. Yes? How, about how many lines of code is this thing? Well, you can try it out, not that much. As I have shown you the core of the, or the heart of the implementation. There are a few tricks there. I don't know the number. No, I, I don't think it is. You can you can download it from GitHub right. yourself. Um, but would you be willing like to uh, push a little bit so it's, it's um, available with home group? The question was if I would be pushing it. Uh, I'm not familiar with the process, yeah, but it's, um, it's, it's I'm I'm happy to support it. For yeah. right. I'll talk to you through. So the stupid, stupid, my stupidest bugs on which I spend the most time is something like I have MPL vector of twenty. And then I make a push front. And then I look for a long time to be stupid, like, oh, oh yes, it's the of course 21 now. And will I get the plank error back speed to me, or will I get something more readable? So the question was if uh, something goes wrong with the meta function call, will I get the clang error or something nicer? And my answer to that is that you will get the clang error, as it is. So it's not me you have to complain about oh, it. Yes. <laughs> yes? <laughs> Can you declare, define uh, type aliases while you are? Uh, the question writing? was if I can define type aliases, and yes, you can use type def to define a type alias. Or using. Or using. Since, since you get client behind you. With C14 enabled. Um, can you uh, give a command line argument that go, you know, basically acts like an initial include and goes ahead and pulls in some stuff and then drops it the shell? So the question was if I can include things from the command line by command line arguments. Yeah. Uh, not yet, but it's also a great future feature. <coughs> well, there are no other comments then. You said something about it recompiling everything every time. We will get to that oh, shortly. Right. Uh, another thing you can try, so if you can't get it, or don't want to get it, then you can try it online from your browser. There is a website where you can go to and basically try it out. I will show that to you as well. So you can go to this URL, 
and then there is Metashell, uh, you will get a number of libraries available which you can include. A Boost, Loki, MPLEBS, FTMP, Metatest, and you can choose the version you want to be available as well. So you can say that, okay, I want Boost 184, or I want to play with Boost 184 up to some reason. Um, if you are an author of the maintainer of a metaprogramming library that's not here, just drop me a mail and I'm, I'm happy to add it, though. Or if you just want a, a library to be there. But anyway, after that you can click Start Metashell and Metashell will be started in your browser. So you can try it out, you can type int and see that it works. Or you can say that include boost version .hpp and include meta shell scalar hpp and verify the boost version that it's really 184 or 48 <coughs> so you can you can play with it from your browser if you want question The question was if it's possible to specify the C++ version and it's not possible to specify that, it's using the latest one. It, it's hard-coded, it's one Y, it's one Y. It says it there in the header, right? In the comment, which version of LLP? Well, in the comment it tells you which version of Clang are you using, which commit. It's, this uh, online version is using the latest commit from master, so the latest version of Metashell. <coughs> okay, so that's about the online, well I already did the demo, and now let's look at the challenges, the open questions related to this utility. Um, when, uh, this is something that has been asked so far though, when Joe types in adcons type, it tells Metashell that, okay, now I want to run a template meta program. When Joe types in include type traits, it tells Metashell that, okay, now I want to set my environment up. I want to include stuff, whatever. And uh, it means that whenever something is typed in, then something has to, be, has to decide if it's a command to run a meta program or a, a command setting up the environment. And it's not that simple, so it might be a using namespace, it might be a template meta function definition, it might be just a using directive, and so on. Pound defined. I'm sorry? It might be a pound defined. Might be a? Preprocessor definition. Yeah. So the current solution is that uh, I get the list of tokens using boost wave, and there are some ad hoc rules which says, okay, if it begins with a hash mark or pound include, then it must be an environment setting up thing. Or if it begins with the keyword using, then it must be an environment set up thing. So it's completely ad hoc rules. They work more or less, so you can live with it, but a solution may be parsing this command line. Well, you can think of these ad hoc rules as a, a very simple way of parsing things. Or it would be nice if you could ask Clang, is this a type or not? Or if anyone has any good idea, I'm, I'm happy to to fix this, but at the moment there are only ad hoc rules. Yes? So why don't you simply add a, a, some token introducing one of these, so saying now I'm on the meta even so. So the question was why don't I make the user tell the shell that I'm, I'm running? Yeah. So which one is happening? My answer to that is because it's easier to use. But this is something we can live with, yeah. or at least I can live with. But yes, that's a solution that the user tells us, okay, now I'm running a meta program, now I'm defining something. Mm -hmm. uh, if there are no further comments, then I was talking about setting up the environment. <clears throat> the environment in Metashell is basically a string. Uh, a piece of C++ source code which defines the underscore underscore meta shell and whatever needs to be defined. And when you get the shell and you type in include type traits, then what meta shell does is that it makes a copy of this environment, it appends what you have typed in, gives it to libclang, 
and the crank says, well, you misspelled include. And in that case, this error is displayed to you as it is, and you get back the prompt. So you fix it, and the whole thing starts again. Uh, Metashell makes a copy, appends what you have typed in, gives it to libclang. Libclang says, it's fine, I can build the AST now. So what Metashell does is that your line is appended to the environment. So this is how you're, you're building the history of the environment. After that, you define a meta function. Metashell takes the environment, appends your meta function definition. Clang says, I can parse it. This thing is appended as well. After that, you say, now I'm running a template meta program. Uh, Metashell takes your string, appends your Metashell v variable because Metashell knows that now you're running a meta program. Libclang tells it what it resolves to, it is displayed, and the whole thing keeps going. So when you're building history, you're basically building this environment thing up. And there is a common line argument, dash capital V, to Metashell. If you give it to Metashell, then Metashell will display this environment for you at every iteration. So if you want to look at what other pieces of code are evaluated before what you have typed in, you can look at it. <clears throat> the main problem with this is that it's not, a, a, it, so it, it is compiled over and over again. <clears throat> and uh, if it would be, uh, or if it would work in a way that uh, Clang supported incremental compilation and you could say, okay, I've got this, I've already parsed this earlier, and now please parse this one line only, then it would be much, much faster. As, have, yeah? have you investigated the precompiled header support in Clang? question is if I have investigated the pre-compiled header support in Clang, and no, I have not. Okay, because you, sh you should be able to take the environment, compile it, and save off that, save that off. And then when, when you compile, you know, add constant, you say, compile this text with this environment and go. And you'd have to regenerate the pre-compiled header every time you modify the environment. But if you were doing um, just queries over and over again, it should be much faster. Great idea. So the comment was that I should create a pre-compiled header out of this, and then every time I should just include it, and that would make it much faster. Yes? Is it really an issue in practice? I mean, maybe it's just not for the trouble. Uh, the question was if it's really an issue in practice, and uh, you, in your talk yesterday you have shown us uh, how long it takes to include the boost headers. Yeah. And in this model, you include it every time you enter a new command, right. and you have to pay for it over and over again over that eight or nine second penalties in some cases. <laughs> there was a comment saying the faster is always better. Um, yeah, other comments? <clears throat> so what are the future plans? Here is this uh, GDB-like interface I've already described. So if we use template, which Zoltan Porcola presented here last year, uh, that thing, takes a, a source code, it's a Clang extension, it takes a C++ source code, you compile it, and it gives you the list of template instantiations. And not just the list, the tree of template instantiations. So you can tell which, the instantiation of which template triggered the instantiation of which other template. And from that information, it's possible to, to ex uh, extract the, the template metaprogramming function call chain, so call stack basically, which you can traverse then so you can, it's possible to build that interface. But it's to be done. And another big to-do is the Windows build. So it's currently built on Linux. To the best of my knowledge, you can build it on Mac OS X, but uh, the Windows build needs uh, some polishment. And yeah, a story for another day. It's about Joe, which, who is a C, C++ developer. And in this case, he gets interested in preprocessor metaprogramming, and over time he becomes... <laughs> uh, he might just happen to need preprocessor metaprogramming to be able to do template tricks. Uh, anyway, he would need a, a similar shell, and what would be good for him is that he types in something like this, where he is calling non-trivial macros from boost preprocessor, for example, and then he could just see the, the evaluated version of this. 
I've got news, good news for you. There is the utility pre-shell, which does this. Um, I won't go into detail on this, um, but you can also try it online at the same place where Metashell. Um, Boost Wave comes with a utility, uh, the Wave utility, which also contains an interactive shell that is similar to this one. What this offers uh, beyond that is that uh, you get access to the standard headers of your GCC or Clang, and you get this uh, history and tab completion and these sorts of things. So there is pre-shell and you can also look at it and you can also use it and in some cases it is also this useful. So again, this is my email address. Here are the URLs where you can find the utilities. Here is where you can try it online. So are there further questions? Just can you get the environment if you didn't struggle with dash v? He wants to be able to print out the environment. Uh, well, if you right. didn't specify dash v, then you cannot say that, okay, now I want the environment. So Because if you had that, then it would, you, you know, you could, in fact, repl you, could, you, could, you could print it out, save it, you know, copy, paste somewhere, save it out, and then restart a section and paste it in. So the comment was that if you could do that, then you could save it any time. Uh, I think it would be better for the users if there was a comment saying that now save it to this file and there was another comment saying show me and right. there was another comment push and pop yeah. so these are these are all additions possible future additions to this thing other comments questions in that case thank you for your attention <laughs>